Today we're gonna build this. You have probably seen nanoleaf panels already, even if you didn't realize it. Tons of YouTubers use them, or something similar, as a background mood lighting. And they look awesome. Are these ones better or are they worse? Each one is just as good as the next. So let's get started. With a four figure side hustle. The modern day smart home. And I went with the Pixel 9a Fallout on achieving great frame rates. A ton of amazing all in one liquid CPU coolers. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. I was honestly thinking about buying some myself, but the price is kind of wild for a just an RGB light. So I searched YouTube for DIY Nanoleaf, and of course I found a ton of projects, some of them good, some of them less good. But none of them ticked all my boxes. And what do you do when you want something that doesn't quite exist yet? Exactly, you build it yourself. The project, as always, is completely open. You'll find all the files you need on my website, so go ahead, grab what you need and make the most of it. Now about those boxes I wanted to check. The first one, and this was essential, it had to be smart, meaning I wanted full integration with Home Assistant. But of course you can connect it to any other smart home systems as well. Once you have that kind of control, you can use it to a lot more than just a mood lighting. You can for example use it as a bedside lamp with a sunrise alarm. It can show live weather, rain, snow, sun, lighting. Or it can ping you when things happened at home. Washers done, front door just opened, package delivered, etc. Basically, it can present any event in your home in whatever visual way you want. And because you can connect multiple panels to whatever shape you like, in between notifications, it's just a wall art. Functional RGB wall art. But that's not all. Each panel has six independent buttons. There's one on every flat edge of the hexagon. So it's not just reacting to things in your home. It can trigger stuff too. Everything's powered by a standard USB-C wall adapter. You probably have like dozens of those lying around. Alright, let's get into how this thing is built, starting with the schematic in the PCB. The brain of every panel is an ESP32. That means each panel is technically its own smart device. So if you decide you want two separate patterns on two different walls, you can totally split them. For the lighting, I'm using addressable RGB LEDs, WS2812, also known as NeoPixels. Now, unlike a lot of similar DIY projects, this is not just an LED strip around the edge. It's an actual XY matrix, a legit 2D pixel grid, which gives you a lot more flexibility for effects. There are also six buttons I mentioned, plus six edge connectors for linking panels. They carry both power and communication pins, so the modules can talk to each other and stay in sync, even though each one is independent. The PCB based on that schematic looks like this. If you are building this yourself, I recommend using a white solder mask like I did. White reflects way more light inside the enclosure, so we get maximum possible brightness out the front. And since we are talking about PCBs, I want to thank the sponsor of this project, JLC PCB. They are the ones who made these boards for me. JLC is mainly known for PCB fabrication, but they can also assemble components for you, 3D print basically anything on pretty much any type of printer, and CNC machine parts. They can handle like 80% of your project for you. The only thing left for you to do is to put it all together. I personally usually order bare PCBs and I've never had any complaints about quality or customer service. The ordering process is super straightforward. Just upload your Gerber files on their website, pick a few options if you want, pay and that's it. Your boards go straight into production and a few days later, depending on the shipping option you choose, they show up at your door. Thanks JLC PCB!
The enclosure is made of three parts. I name them very creatively bottom, top and front panel. The bottom and top parts are FD imprinted, but the front panel I wanted it smooth, glossy and able to evenly diffuse the light. I tried printing that at first, but the result wasn't acceptable. You could see texture and it didn't diffuse well. So this is where frosted acrylic comes in and saves the day. It's perfectly smooth, translucent and spreads the light evenly across the whole surface. I'm cutting acrylic with a CO2 laser, easily the fastest and cleanest way. And this laser is the Xtool P2. Xtool sent it to me so I could make a few projects and demonstrate what a laser like this can do, which for me was an amazing deal because it let me build stuff I wouldn't have tried otherwise. Cutting one of these diffuser panels takes about 15 seconds. For reference, printing the same shape on my Prusa would take around one hour. So yeah, bit of a difference. On the bottom, there's a USB-C connector for power. At least one module in your layout needs to have that. If you are not planning to separate them later, the rest don't technically need it. The rest can just have a simple pin headers here, like this one. On the back, every enclosure has a keyhole mount, so you can hang it on the wall. Depending how many modules you are using and how you arrange them, you may want to use two or more mounting points. To make layout planning easier for you and for me, I made a small web application. You can add, remove and connect modules however you want. That way you can see how the final pattern will look like on the wall. You can also rotate everything by 30 degrees if you prefer hexagon pointing up instead of flat side up. Once you're happy with your design, you can build that exact shape in real life. To connect modules, we're gonna use these double-ended male pin headers. I did consider using magnetic connectors like this. They look and work great, but they are fairly expensive especially when you need six of them per panel. These pin headers are not as sexy, but they work and they cost basically nothing. Now let's secure everything with these clips. That keeps the modules from separating when you leave the whole assembly and hang it on the wall. The last touch is these small caps that cover unused mounting holes. They block light from leaking out and they make the build look cleaner overall. Like I said before, every module has its own ESP32, which means every module needs to be programmed separately. Before we continue, let me address the obvious question. Why not use just one ESP32 as the main controller and daisy chain the rest of the panels? In theory you could, but there are a few problems with that. First, for some patterns it's just impossible to daisy chain everything using only edge connectors. You'd end up running extra wires under or around panels, and I really wanted to avoid that. And second, if everything is daisy chained from one brain, you can't just unplug one module and use it as a standalone lamp somewhere else. The obvious downside of this approach is that the flashing takes a bit longer up front, but after that it honestly doesn't matter anymore. 
ESP Home supports bulk updates over there and in Home Assistant you can group all modules and treat them like one light. So let's generate the ESP Home configuration files for your modules. On my website there's a form that will generate all the files you need. Of course you can tweak them however you like. Think of this like a starting point. Just type in a base name and how many modules you want to use. Then hit generate. Now you'll need to drop those files into the ESP Home folder in your Home Assistant setup. There are a couple ways to do that. The common way is to install the Samba add-on. That shares your Home Assistant folders over the network. So from your PC or Mac it shows up like a network drive. But there's even easier way to do that that doesn't require any network setup. Just install the Studio Code Server. It's basically a code editor that runs inside Home Assistant. It's much nicer than the built-in text editor and also gives you a file browser directly in your, well, browser. You can just drag and drop the freshly generated files straight into the ESP Home folder. Done. In ESP Home you should now see the new configs ready to flash. But before you actually start programming anything, you need to change the coordinates of each module. Those are the numbers you saw while coming up with the pattern you want to create in my app. In each config file, for each lamp, just put the correct coordinates based on where it is in your layout. And that's basically the only manual change you have to make. I couldn't pre-fill that for you because I have no idea what shape you are going to make. Now connect each panel one by one with the USB UART adapter and flush them all. There's one more config file called your name underscore base. That's where all the logic lives. All the effects and all the behavior is configured in here. So if you are going to add any effect in the future or tweak any behavior, you only need to edit that one file. Then you can push it to all modules at once by just clicking update all. Okay, after flashing, let's hop into Home Assistant. All the panels should be auto discovered. So the only thing you need to do is to confirm that you want them added to Home Assistant. Next, create a group and add all of them to it. From now on, you can control the whole pattern of lights as if it is just a single light. And that's basically it. I'm not gonna go into ESP Home configuration here because honestly, that part gets pretty nerdy and kind of boring to watch. Consider that as optional homework. Thanks for staying till the end, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to see another project of mine that's not only RGB wall decor, but also a light switch with a custom engraved graphic, check out this video next.